Hello, hello! Welcome to another tutorial video from Analytics Voyage. Today, we're diving deep into the world of time series data modeling, simple moving average in particular. Time series modeling is widely employed in diverse fields such as finance, economics, marketing, and many more for accurate forecasting and informed decision making based on historical data patterns. Let's get started. First thing first, we need to define what time series data is and how it is relevant to our analysis. Time series data is a sequence of data points collected or recorded at specific time intervals, such as monthly average rainfall or weekly closing stock prices. These intervals could be seconds, minutes, hours, days, or even years. The data points are typically plotted against time so that we can observe trends, patterns, or anomalies in the data. We should always keep in mind that the pattern of the data is a key factor in this data modeling. In time series modeling, the pattern of data can be decomposed into two main components, systematic and non-systematic. A systematic component refers to a recognizable and recurring trend or behavior within the data that can be categorized into four main types, stationary, trend, seasonal, and cyclical. The non-systematic component refers to the random, unpredictable variations or noise present in the data that cannot be attributed to any identifiable pattern, trend, or seasonality. Now, let's go into more details for each component. Stationary pattern. A stationary pattern in time series data means that the data does not change its statistical behavior over time. It remains steady, making it easier to analyze and predict future trends. Trend pattern. Trend pattern represents the long-term direction or pattern in the data. It can be upward, indicating growth, downward, indicating decline, or even flat, indicating stability. For example, in a growing economy, the GDP data would exhibit an upward trend. The trend does not need to be consistent or even linear over the entire time series. Seasonality pattern. Seasonality refers to regular and predictable patterns of variation that occur within specific time frames, often on a yearly basis. For instance, sales of winter clothing tend to increase in colder months and decrease in warmer ones. These fluctuations typically repeat themselves in future iterations of that specific time frame. Seasonality occurs due to weather or institutional reasons, for example, holidays or cultural celebrations or accounting periods. And the last one is cyclical pattern. This component is similar to the seasonal fluctuations, but unlike seasonal patterns, Cyclical patterns do not have fixed periods of time and can vary in amplitude. This makes the cyclical component difficult to predict. This pattern is mostly influenced by external factors like economic conditions, policy changes, and technological advancements. An example could be the business cycle, which includes periods of economic expansion and contraction. By the way, are you getting something valuable from this video? If so, why not hit that subscribe button? We've got plenty more content like this lined up for you. Okay, let's jump back into our main topic. Now that we've got a handle on time series data, let's move on to the star of the show, simple moving average. Simple moving average is a powerful tool used in analyzing time series data. Let's break it down and see how it helps us make predictions. 
This is a technique that smooths out data by calculating the average of a set of values within a specific time frame. In other words, it is an estimate of the demand for the future time period, and we get this estimate by averaging the demand for a specified number of data. For example, if you want to use simple moving average to predict the sales of a company for April based on the past three months, you can do that by averaging the sales of January, February, and March. Now, let's see an example in Excel and see how we can forecast data by using simple moving average. In this worksheet, we have the inflation rate of Australia from September 2011 all the way to December 2021. This data is recorded quarterly, and we have data for every September, December, March, and June. In column A, we have quarterly months, so we know it's time series data. In column B, we've got the inflation rates in percentage. At the end of that series, you can see the empty cells for four quarterly months of 2022. These are the ones that we are going to predict in this example. Whenever we forecast time series data, it's important to understand its underlying pattern. This is why we need to plot the data first to detect the pattern. So I'm going to select column A and B by selecting cells A1 and B1, and then pressing Ctrl, Shift, and down arrow simultaneously to select all the data. Then on the top ribbon, go to the Insert tab. Under the Chart section, select Line Chart. We'll choose the first 2D line chart. Now we have our chart. I'll just try to expand it to be more clear. Now it does look like that our data pattern is fairly stationary. You could approximately draw a line through the middle. And even though the data fluctuates, it seems to revert to that middle line. How can you get that line? First, we select the chart. And then on the top ribbon, find the chart design. Then on the left, go to the add chart element. And then find the trend line option. And choose linear. Now we have the trend line. And we can see that it is not a perfectly horizontal line. Since it is fairly flat, we can say that the pattern is stationary. To do the forecast, first we need to decide on the number of data points to use each time to calculate the average. This value is called the degree of the moving average, and it is arbitrary. I'm going to pick 4 because it's quarterly data. You can choose 8, for example. One way to work out what's the optimal degree for the moving average is to do multiple moving averages and then compare the error criteria, such as the mean squared error, which we will get to it shortly. Now, let's move the chart away or make it smaller so we can focus on the data points. Okay. Let's go over the data points to calculate the average. Since I picked the degree of 4, my predictions start at the fifth value within the data set, which is September 2012. Let's label the column C as prediction. And then in column C, cell C6, which is the prediction for my fifth value, I calculate the average of the first four data points of column B. To do that, you can use the average function of the Excel by typing equal 
average and then select those four values. You can also add them up and divide it by four. Then drag the cell all the way down, including the 2022 cells to do this calculation for all the data points. I wanted to remind you that this is called moving average since the prediction at each data point is based on the average of the preceding four data points specific to that point. So many points in one sentence. Okay, now let's look at the last predicted value. Wow, something's wrong here. Last predicted value refers to three empty cells. That is because the simple moving average can only predict one data point forward. And here we are trying to predict four data points forward for which we don't have enough information. What if we want to have predictions for the whole next year now? One way to deal with this lack of data is to assume the predicted value of the missing cell to be equal to the actual value and then continue with the calculation. So now let's add the number we got for March 2022 as the actual value and calculate the prediction for June 2022 and do the same thing for the rest. But we should keep in mind that since predicted values were involved as part of the prediction calculation, they could not be as accurate as the first data point prediction. Now we did the prediction for the degree of four. You can practice more by doing this process with degree of two or six or any number you like. Remember I mentioned we can find the best simple moving average degree by minimizing the error? Now it's time to see how to calculate the error. The accuracy checks of our models are performed using error functions. These error functions are essentially mathematical summaries of the errors our model make when predicting outcomes. They are designed to provide us with a clear understanding of how well our models are performing. These error functions can be based on different approaches, either absolute errors or squared errors. Absolute errors, as the name suggests, are the absolute difference between actual values and the predicted values. Squared errors, on the other hand, involve squaring these differences. In this video, our main focus is on the mean squared error, or MSE. The MSE is a widely used error function that provides a comprehensive view of your model's accuracy. To calculate MSE, you simply take the average of the squared differences between the actual values and the predicted values in your dataset. Lower MSE values indicate better model performance. In other words, a lower MSE means that your model's predictions are closer to the actual values in your dataset. I would like to introduce a valuable function in Excel that can help you calculate the mean square error. It is called SUMXMY2 function. This function in Excel is used to find the sum of the squares of the differences between corresponding values in two arrays. In the context of calculating MSE, you can use this function to find the sum of squared differences between your actual values and predicted values in your dataset, and in the end, divide it by the number of your data. The only thing left is dividing by the number of your data points. We can find that by using the count function in Excel. The count function will return the number of data points in the data set, which can then be used to divide the sum of the squared differences to find the MSE. Let's go back to Excel 
to assess the accuracy of our SMA4 model's prediction. When calculating the mean squared error, it's important to choose data points for which we have both actual and predicted values. This means excluding the first four data points as they lack predictions and the 2022 data points as they lack actual values. To calculate MSE using the SUMXMY2 function, go to an empty cell and type equal sum x m y 2 and select the cells from row 6 to row 43. Actual values as array 1 and at predicted values as array 2. Then divide by the number of the data points, which can be calculated using the count function. This is all we need to do to perform a simple moving average to do forecasting for a set of data. Remember I said that the degree of simple moving average is arbitrary and we can optimize that by comparing the error values in different prediction models? Let's quickly do the SMA8 and compare the MSE values with the one we just calculated. Keep in mind that when comparing two models, MSC values should have same starting point. Therefore, in order to compare MSE value of SMA4 with SMA8, both MSEs should include data starting from September 2013. Comparing these two MSE values, we can see that the SMA8 has a slightly lower mean squared error indicating that the degree of 8 provides a more accurate prediction compared to the degree of 4. In forecasting scenarios, it's crucial to employ various models, including different degrees for simple moving average models and even exponential smoothing, and then assess their accuracy to determine and use the most effective approach, similar to what we did here. By the way, we will cover exponential smoothing in our future videos. In comparing different forecasting methods, a key consideration is the relative accuracy of these methods. To practice more, you can do the SMA with a degree of 6 or 10 and compare the results with SMA 4 and check which one is doing a better prediction. You can find the link to these data in the description below. In the second sheet of that file, you can also find the solution for both SMA4 and SMA8 for your reference. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more contents like this. Feel free to comment below if you have any questions or if there's a specific topic you'd like us to cover next. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.